Great. Welcome that. to the Divorce Dad Playbook <laughs> Podcast. I'm Dan Levy. I'm the Scott Levy. I um Scott, I went I went theme song spelunkin, as I like to oh. do. Oh, boy. Um, yeah, no, I will tell you right now. Uh, it is we're taping this on Sunday uh, of the holiday weekend that just just finished. Um, you wanted to put an extra show up on the holiday weekend because you know we had so much uh, people, so many people talking about the first twelve episodes we gave them. You're like, we need another one. How about the one we put out specifically about what we're thankful for? We need another one. So I've been up for thirty six straight hours, and so this was going to be our theme song. Here. You have to know what this is. Nope. No! Sleep! Sleep! No podcast! God, you really are into the Beastie Boys. Well, yeah, so yeah. So anyway, for people who, um, who follow me... Should give me a shout-out to the Instagram. Beastie Boys. First of all, Old I school. never... I never told my Beastie Boys story. I teased it like two episodes ago, and I still haven't told it. So there we go. Here, today's the day. That was going to be. No, no, hold on, hold on. That was going to be the theme song, No Sleep Till Brooklyn, because I, I haven't slept in enough. I could have gone back and forth to Brooklyn like 35 times in the amount of time that I have not slept. Wait, can I get this straight? Are you actually blaming me for your lack you. of sleep? You, you insinuated. We'll my- you insinuated that I forced you to work long and hard hours of the holiday weekend because I wanted to get one of the podcast episodes out sooner than you did. Therefore, yeah. you did yeah. not sleep because of me. No, 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 that, that you're, you're, you're just taking, you're reading into that. That's not what I'm saying at all. What I'm it's saying is exactly what you said. What I'm saying is there's a tremendous amount of content that needs to be uh, put together for the site, not just for the podcast, which now this is episode, let's say 14, uh, and plus the extra one. So we'll call it 14 and a half. But there's all this actual amazing information that's on the site that is coming out of these fingers and this brain. And so it's just the, 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 the compendium of, of work that I have had, have ho- foisted upon me. I'm just coming up with, Jesus. I don't even know if these words are right, right anymore. Right, right. I, I don't need a like a thesaurus to sit through this podcast. What the hell is going on here? I've got turkey learn something. Brain. If you're not going to learn something, by the way, so sh- holi- sure that holiday's over. Up. That holiday's over. Yeah. We are officially into the Christmas holiday, uh, dun, and so dun, before dun, we get dun, to dun, 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 dun. no, that's not the theme song. I was going to do a, like a Christmas theme, but I figure we have time for that. But we have a guest on today's show. Nicole Gray yes. is a tremendous interior designer and she uh, refinishes and repaints like custom furniture and whatnot. Uh, And she, you'll see in the, in the interview in a couple of minutes, I mean, Christmas just like vomited all over her living room. It's amazing. It looks looks beautiful. Is that not the word I should use? I would not use vomited. I think that her place looks great. And I would also say it's not that she does so much custom because custom seems expensive. She actually does reasonably priced yeah. unique furnishings that can make your place look special. So uh, I, I think both of those things, I, I think that um, Santa kissed her apartment, did not vomit on it. And I think that she does, you said v- Christmas vomited in her apartment. That's not, a, that's San- not what it Santa like kissed all. her apartment? This is the grossest thing ever. I'm saying, well, you know, there are some rain droppings, reindeer. I don't droppings. know where you, you are. You, you, this is, you're too Jewish to have this talk. Like you just I'm don't not, know enough I'm about not, Christmas. I'm, I'm, I'm not that Jewish. <laughs> Speaking of Jewish, can I do the theme song before we start talking more about what Nicole can offer the, the show? Because yes. as you notice, there's a theme. Remember a few episodes ago, Scott, where I said, um, if only there was a good version of Sabotage that I could use oh for the show. And I can't stand it. I know you planned it. Oh, oh, oh. This I'm is amazing. Rocking when I'm in here. Crystal this is the tabernacle choir. Some guy named Richard Moore. You can't say nothing. And You're some dudes. With the push of your this is amazing. This is all I wish for. This is a miracle. 
I'll tell you now. We should we should just do an entire podcast dedicated to remakes. I'm doing the deep. Sabotage. Sabotage. How amazing is that? Don't tell me you can't stand it, because that's phenomenal. Yeah, that Pretty guy's amazing. name is Richard Moore. He's on YouTube or something. The other one, just a, it was a, the, the one who did the piano, which is a very, very uh, good rendition. I've looked for a lot of those renditions of No Sleep Till Brooklyn. That was a guy, the guy's uh, YouTube is called Jammin' on the Ivories. You do you, man. So there you hey, go. I do me, you do you, they do them. All right, we're going to get to some topics that people care about, but I am, before we get to the interview with Nicole, I'm paying off that Beastie Boys story. It's a good story. Wait, so we're listening to the Beastie Boys story right now? No, before we go to the interview. Like, we, we have things that oh, we okay. are going to talk about. Yes. And we then need, we're going to do the... We need yeah. to talk. A couple yeah. of things... <laughs> oh, shit. Uh, a couple of things, <laughs> real quick, and I, and I want to tease this at the beginning, because often when we have a guest, they're in the middle of the show, and I just want to point this out. Now that the site is up and everybody is, is talking about it, uh, to us at least, uh, which is one of the things I want to get to... Um, what we have been doing is some of these interviews go a lot longer than perhaps you hear just on the podcast. Uh, and some of them are actually up uh, earlier. We have a couple of, of interviews on the cut ups of interviews on the site that have not yet been on the show, which is another reason why we're doing that is to give people who are members of the site a little bit of a preview, a little bit of a head start on things. Uh, by the way, if people are obsessed with the show, which people keep telling me you are, members are going to get it a day earlier. So it's worth it just for that. If you want to hear us a day earlier than everyone else, then pay this man his money. Do you know what that's from? Do you know what that's from? Pay him. Pay this man his money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rounders. Bam! There you go. Nice. Right? Nice. How are you? Yeah. Yeah. That was impressive. That's the most popular show you've ever done. I don't often get things right when you say your weird voices, but that time I get it. I'm very good. proud of you. Yeah. Thank you. So uh, one cool thing, we're going to talk, we're going to try and stick to most of the stuff that we're going to talk with Nicole is about the Christmas holiday and decorating, and not just Christmas, but, but around this festive time of year. Uh, one of the conversations that we have is pertaining to who gets the decorations? Like when you split up, like who gets the ornaments and what do you do with the ornaments? Is, are they in the back of the tree type of thing? And that, but there's a lot of other stuff that is going to pertain specifically uh, to my situation a few months ago. So I know it pertains to a lot of the people who are listening. If you're going through divorce now, if you're moving out, if you already did, but you're going into a bigger place from a smaller place, which I hope to do at some point. I know you did that, Scott, when, you know, years ago. Uh, what do you do? Do you sell your crap and buy a new crap? Do you put it in storage? So a lot of that is going to just be on the site. If you want to get that information and it is really, really helpful, uh, you're, going to have to, you're going to have to become a member. <laughs> Professional tease. You're going to want to become a member anyway. That's a yes. benefit and a bonus. Yes. Less professional well, tease, but a little well bit said. more of a hard sell. Yeah. yeah. Um, can I read something? Funny that you're doing the hard selling. <laughs> I, th I thought you were doing the hard selling. Uh, anyway. It wasn't hard um, selling at all. I think this is an easy sell. I think this is a no brainer. As a matter of fact, we worked over the holiday to get an option in there for because people wanted it. They want to be able to gift a subscription to the site. Oh, so it's, oh, it's, it's now available. Yeah, I yeah. can't tell you. I can't tell you how many women I talk to, full stop. And of those women <clears throat> that I talk to, I can't tell you how, I'm just kidding, come on. I can't tell you how many of them have said like, oh, my ex or oh, my friend or blah, blah, blah. And so one thing that we've come across, Scott, is like men are proud. Like they won't stop and ask for directions, that old cliche. So if they won't ask for directions to get to a place. Everyone's got GPS now, so that's kind of out the window. This is the new not ask for directions. And hopefully people listen to us and realize that we're being honest and vulnerable and, and you know, well-rounded humans and that you're allowed to ask for help. God knows I wish I would have thought of that five years earlier than I did. Yes. But if you Amen. aren't yet there, maybe the women in your life, your mother, your ex, your sister will gift this to you. Yes. That's I think idea. that that's, that's why we created that because I, we did talk to a, a, a lot of women who were saying, I know about a half a dozen people that need this. And I'm like, all right, well, let's make it available to them too, through you. So there you have it. I got, I got a lot of uh, 
responses over the weekend, over the holiday weekend from people, people who I've known for a long time who are like, Hey, I never listened to anything you've done before. Holy crap. <laughs> this is great. And I'm like, thanks, but I'm glad that you're here now. One from someone who I don't know, uh, a guy, Jake, and I sent this to you the other day. This is awesome. And this is sort of the, why we do this type of thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so I got this on Twitter. Hey, Dan, I'm only 21 and don't really have business listening to a divorced dad's podcast, but I've tried to do a podcast before, so it interests me to see how others do theirs. I only intended to listen to about five minutes, but ended up listening to the whole first episode. The chemistry you got with your bro is unreal, and not sure why that woman do dodged the Eagles date, but I'd be willing to bet she unmatched because she thought her bailing again would ruin your opinion of her. Very enjoyable listen, and plan to listen to more for sure. And I wrote him back, obviously thanking him, and said, talk about a tease we bring that up a couple episodes later that that we paid that one off too in phenomenal fashion uh yes. so we try to bring back the things that we talk about i mean sometimes we forget we get caught up on other things um case in point remember i said uh, uh we got a a note from a woman cammy in, in pennsylvania who trumped my no i hate that word who who uh, <laughs> transcended my worst date I just hate the word. It's just a bad word. Like it's just, just does, it doesn't, joking. I wish there was a better word. Thesaurus being what it is. Um, her bad date, her worst date ever superseded mine. And I, I, if we get time, I want to pay that off today. If not, we'll just keep teasing that until, until the next and the next, but we did get a lot of good feedback. One thing, Scott, I do want to talk about You brought this up last time a little bit. Some of the feedback you got, isn't just, Hey, you guys are doing a great show. It's I need your help. And so I wanted yeah. to give you the opportunity to bring up some of those because that's why we're doing this, not just to pat ourselves on the freaking back, but to actually help the people who are listening. So let, let's, let's bring it up. Yeah, I, I mean, we were getting a lot of that and that's what we had hoped for and that's what we expected. What I did not expect was, and we talked about this previously, was the variety of situations that people are put in. Uh, and some of them are quite unfortunate. Some of them are really uh, deep in in not only anger and hate, but also there's very intense financial burdens on people. Um, there's some abuse in other situations, which are which is really really tough. And 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 I understand that. And and um, we 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 want to be there for those people. And when I say we, I mean us as a community, which is what we're trying to build the community. It was interesting over the holidays. We expected this, and that's why we talked about this over the holidays. I got a note from an old friend. And this is a woman, and she was talking about the fact that this was her first Thanksgiving uh, apart from her family. And, and that is why we had talked about this before, and I know you can highly relate to that. Um, yeah. Again, I, I can, although we all had the kids on Thanksgiving, and it was great they were able to FaceTime, FaceTime, not FaceTime, Zoom, whatever we did. We didn't Zoom. We, uh, we, we Googled Zoom. met. We, we Googled yeah google met is that what we did yeah we google met yeah it's google meet yeah. it's past tense we google met oh, yeah we google met and and that was that was weird but fun and and then we went into our weekends and i know um you know this was <laughs> look i'm not immune to this either uh, i had a sleepless night last night i know you did too which is weird because did you see i did literally you see, had a sleepless night wait no I did too, and I don't know if you noticed this. That I, I saw you responded to, to me at three in the morning. What the heck? Right away, because I was up also, and and so yeah. what I would say, and and kind of wrapping this around of a lot of what we got from people is, uh, it's it's stressful around the holidays anyway. I don't care if you're married and you have kids and you're living with your spouse and your family is all safe and healthy. Uh, it's stressful this year, particularly. It's stressful. And when you go into this first year or your second year or your fifth year, or your 10th year as a divorced parent, um, it's extremely stressful, especially when you're by yourself. And, and I, um, this weekend after I didn't have the kids, I kept myself very busy and I, I had some fun times, but I actually had a very sleepless night. And that's what a lot of people were talking about is that they just don't know how to move on with their lives. And that's real, that's a real thing and that's okay to have those feelings, but you need to figure out what to do with your time. You need to figure out how to occupy yourselves. We got this stuff out there pretty quick. And you were joking at the beginning of the show about you pulling all nighter to get the get the latest podcast out there. 
we did it for our audience because we want them to be able to have something else to binge besides things on Netflix and, and Hulu and whatever right. else you have, but other, well, whatever other subscriptions you're, you know, involved in. But I do think that yeah. that's a real thing. So, so the point was, I heard from somebody in particular, not mentioning her name because I didn't get permission to mention her name, but she was very nervous about not only this past holiday, but also going into the holidays with regards to Hanukkah, Christmas, New Year's, et cetera. These are tough times and uh, you're going to have some sleepless nights. And and that's why we invite people to get involved with the site because we want you to be able to have a forum to talk to others who are going through the same exact thing that you are. If it's not us, there are other people that are going out, that are out there that are going through the same things. Yeah. And, and again, the, the, it's interesting that you brought that up because I, I, in, in not sleeping last night, our, our last show, uh, if people are listening to this linearly, and what's interesting is that you don't have to, but it does, there is a little bit of a connection from one to the, there's some growth, I think, at least on my part, and you uh, progressively get fed up with me, I think, throughout the episodes. Um, but I think, I think one of the things that I, that I noticed is that people are jumping around to, you know, to different topics, different guests, and that'll happen. That always happens, especially with guests, like somebody who may not uh, care about this, cares about that, and, you, and you'll get an uptick in certain, and, and, and that's to be expected. But I, I have noticed a good number of people did start at the beginning and have progressed through. The episode that we put up on Sunday was very long for us. And it was the first time that you and I got in, in like an actual argument. And what's very interesting to me, because I just listened to the entire show back, we taped it a few days ago, but I, I just listened to it. Everything that you just said about what your friend reached out to you was kind of the flip of what we were talking about the other day, where because it hit someone close to you and because that person then sent you a note about how difficult it is for them, and you mentioned abuse and you mentioned financial, these are things, these are, these are things that I have said to you in the past and maybe unfairly said like, oh, you're talking about your friends who trying to buy a boat or you know whatever but but some of these some of these things are hitting people who are in our lives and i'm glad to hear you say that now not because a friend of yours had to reach out to say that to you but it, it, it's it juxtaposed to the previous episode even it shows how we're learning from our audience and how we need that in order for this show to grow but also for like you said for this community to grow not that you didn't know that existed but when you get a personal touch someone that you've known for a long time telling you about those struggles it's different than me telling you about someone who i care about you know you're the further detached you are the less it matters to you and i think that's where it comes in where you get these notes and everything from people and, and now it starts to hit us too and and, and that's yeah. it's it's tough it's tough when it's someone you care about but it's also tough when it's someone who you don't know and they still send you something because they care enough about yeah. us and our opinions. And that's some of the stuff that we got. I'm not going to share a lot of those because I haven't asked people if we can. Um, but man, like some of the stuff, thank you guys for, for having the guts to send that even just to us, let alone, you know, to get us to talk about it on the show. Yeah. Uh, you know, one thing that was interesting and I was talking to somebody else uh, over the holiday weekend and, and it does bring this up and, and, and I don't mean to not, be focused on this part because I do think that this is reality. I think this is the one thing that divorced parents uh, share, which is it doesn't matter if you have $10 to your name, $10,000 or 10 million, you still feel the same pain that a lot of other people do. You still feel really alone when mm -hmm. you're on a holiday weekend uh, without your kids and without your, you know, family as you used to know it because again keep in mind and one thing that i was also talking to somebody about is that when you go through this you don't just lose your ex you don't just get your kids basically depending upon your schedule half time or two-thirds right. or a third whatever it may be you lose your extended family we talk about this a lot on the site is that you know, i went from a situation you know my my former in-laws and by the I way, spent, former in-laws, we're coining this phrase on this show here and now. They're called outlaws now. If you're former in-laws, they're not your outlaws. It's amazing. I was actually going to say it. I, I was actually going to say outlaws, but I, I have more respect for them. But but, yes. but it's amazing. Come no, on. They're your outlaws it's, it's, now. It's, it's yes. Yes, true. Uh, but but the thing, and, and I used to say this to my ex also, is that one of the things, you know, our, our relationship didn't work out and we want what's best for the kids. Cool. One of the things that I lost out the most, which I had a really hard time replacing, 
was that extended family. I spent two or three nights, as you know, two or three nights a week with them on the weekends, you know, having dinners and the loss of that family, uh, the extended family who was, who lived really close to me uh, and still was going to be involved with my kids was actually probably ultimately more painful than the loss of my partner in my marriage. I talked to um, one of my sister's in-law or sister's outlaw at this point um, over the weekend. Um, she had posted something about her little kid and because of COVID and whatnot, our kids haven't even seen uh, their cousin for almost a year uh, and he's little. So it's like you lose a quarter of his life or something. And we were just texting back and forth and I just said like, tell him I miss him. And it wasn't just I miss him because of COVID. It was because I miss him because he's like sort of not mine anymore. But that doesn't mean I don't care about the kid and it doesn't mean that I right. don't want to be around and stuff it's, it is a little awkward for them it's less so because i think i have a separate relationship a little bit with them but with the rest of my family for sure i mean it was kind of awkward the whole time anyway for me because i'm a terrible person in terms of like how i treated other people and i didn't realize it at the time and now i feel terrible but it was too little too late deep breath that is not great but flip side of it i talk to mom all the time and mom was closer to my ex than she was to me not an exaggeration for many years and that yeah. there's no way that can't strain and yeah. so that's well, awkward and that's a loss for both of them where they had someone yeah. that they talked to for years that they kind of feel and i said it was like don't feel awkward still have that relationship but apparently people don't do that i don't know I, to me it seems like why not just keep doing it like whatever yeah i mean look it changes you know it this, she's our mother and it changes. Uh, I think that that there's still they share in common the fact that they're still the mother of her grandchildren, and they always have that relationship. And I know that my ex right. still sends mom pictures of the kids when she's out with them, and I think that's really nice and that's great. And it's nice that you can have that kind of relationship still with your what do you call a mother-in-law? Is she an outlaw to yeah, my ex? You literally just changed the in to out outlaw mother okay. outlaw. So it's amazing so it's, it's that it hasn't it's, been a thing until now. I think it's a thing, dude. Uh, nope. It's a thing I, I think, now. I think I think you're claiming that it's our thing, but I think somebody else has said that before. But that's okay. Okay, uh, I'm the Christopher Columbus of mother outlaw. Christopher that's terrible. Columbus. I'm not actually Chris. That's terrible. He's a terrible person. Horrible, horrible historical man. I want nothing to do with him or his parades or anything. I don't or think the Mayflower parades, or any of the pilgrims. Yeah. Why am I bringing okay. this up? I'm very we're, tired. We're, right. We're going off a tangent. All right. So why don't we refocus? And we're just going to have the word hypomania about... just come across the screen. Hello. You, you, Can I read something a, to you? You're using, you're using a lot of big words today, dude. I got to be honest. Hypomania is a big word? I, I wasn't referring I mean, it's to a that compound one word, in particular. But... You've just been using a lot of big words. I think people are going to need a little bit of a thesaurus for this show. I have, I have been perusing my electronic mail, my text message, my SMS, while you were speaking earlier. Um, can I read something to you? This is one of my absolute best friends in the entire freaking world. And um, I always say this whenever I talk about her. Uh, we matched on Bumble. And we went out for coffee and like, while I, she actually asked me this weekend, like she's being very introspective because of the holidays and because she was alone this weekend as well for some of it. And she's like, I'm, I'm just going over all of my past relationships. She's like, were you just not into me? Like what, what the hell happened? And I was like, no, I was being totally honest with you. Like I knew that I wasn't ready to date someone and I would have screwed it up with you. And we had that conversation. I was like, I want to do this all the time with you. I don't care if we hook up three times and then you never want to talk to me again. That's not a relationship that I want. I want you in my life for a very long time. And could it have been both maybe, but she lives pretty far away and it just logistically was difficult. And I wasn't in a place for that. So she's like one of my best friends, legit. It's amazing. I love it. However, this is what she said to tell you. She listened to the show and she tell said, me, yeah, yeah, yeah. Me, I said me, me, Scott. Yes. you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well talked. You do words good today. She said to me, and you can tell your brother that, yes, I do like your rolled pants. That's a callback to very early when I, you know, with the calves and everything. I mean, people know that one. It's your style and I dig it. And I wrote, boom, you tell him. And she said, lots of guys don't care to have a style. And when one does, it's very attractive. 
but maybe that's just because I was a fashion major and worked in fashion for a number of years. I don't know. And so how about that? So she worked in fashion. She knows what she's talking about. This isn't just like a friend of mine who's making me feel good. This is an expert in the world of fashion. She then invalidated everything she said by saying, and if your brother was closer, I'd hit that. So there you go. Thank you and you're welcome. Oh boy. <laughs> well, thank, she knows that you are, you. you are uh, encumbered. Yes. Well, thank you for that. And I appreciate the fact that she has a sense of fashion or is even schooled in fashion. Yeah, I could, I could humbly doing. disagree with the fact that what I will agree with is that it is nice to have your own style and sense of fashion. I just think men in knickers is weird. Okay. First of all, not knickers. They are knickers. rolled up knickers. Knickers. Right, what, gonna, what the I'm, fuck right. is knickers then? If you if you're rolling up pants, hey, thanks for the explicit. What are knickers? The um, they're the basketball team that plays at the Garden. No, the terrible basketball, dude. Yes, the Knicks are a terrible team. Knickers it's are a real thing, and they're and they're and they're th like two thirds length pants. Knickers. 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 I think are more like uh like uh what Payne uh, Stewart used to wear, like the golf. Yes. Players. That's not what that's not what I I don't wear like a you know I no I, what I no, do wait, is it, it has it, they're they're two thirds length pants <laughs> you roll pants your pants all, so they're two thirds okay. lengths in the summer I roll up my pants higher because it's hot out and I think that if you go out like with friends in the city or like on a date and you wear shorts what are you doing you're what are you like in high school I mean wear pants no one no one needs to see your knees men no one. No one needs to see the tank tops and shorts should never be worn out in public in like a, a, like a real setting. Like no one needs to see your armpits and no one needs to see your knees or your knee pits. I mean, it's just the thing. No one needs to. So. Can I, can I just say, because this actually brings it up for the net, hold on for, for the next show, for the next show. I, actually, I forgot one thing that came up a ton. It's not going to be an next show. Over this weekend, the next show we have to talk about dating profiles and and tr and what you can dress and what you can wear a lot of people ask me that and i know a lot of people ask you that too and although we're oh here God. to help in so many different ways there are a lot of people that have no idea what the hell they're doing and it's hilarious not hilarious because you're getting bad dates but hilarious that you think your profile is good it's yeah not. no no well I, and and by the way, uh, we, we I, this, there's already some stuff on the site about this, and and there's going to be a lot on this. We want to focus on the actual stuff that's going to help people who are going through a divorce before we just like start playing around with dating stuff. But I have other people. I have women who I am friends with who are going to write for us, and they're going to do the men side of this. So like, dudes, stop doing these things. But I will say, yeah. Scott, the shirtless selfies, uh, the fish, like, there's an audience for those. So I don't want to just denigrate people who like hold up a fish. I didn't. Talk no, no, no about I know, but fish. we've talked about it on previous episodes. We, but we have talked about it on previous episodes. Um, that 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 there is an audience. There's a distinct audience for some of those things. And what the reason I bring that up is because as I was scrolling through, waiting for you to log on today, I was like, "Ooh, my eyes like lit up," and I'm like, "That woman would never go out with me." But nah, I can't do it. And the reason I couldn't do it is because she wouldn't. It's just not. But there's something about like that. Like, yeah, you know, I grew up in South Jersey. It's like this is like the Jersey Shore, except it's is she holding a fish. No, but she looked like she was from Jersey Shore. And there's something about that that I've always she had, had an infinity for. Her. Well, she had bangs, but nonetheless, yeah, like she was, she looked like she could be on that cast. And so for yeah, me, I was like, bangs. oh man, like I got, I'm I all about of, that. I think a lot of people have bangs. Bangs are in. No, yeah. I, I would say like probably I don't think I, I don't think either of us, I don't think either of us should talk, we should be talking about that bangs are in. But yes, anyway, I think bangs, I think women have bangs. Yeah, did you ever um did you ever watch um Hank Azaria um um uh what's the show that he was on? Um you know, where he was a baseball announcer. The Simpsons? Brock, uh, uh, no, Brockmeyer, Brockmeyer. Well, yeah, he was on the Simpsons. Did you ever watch Brockmeyer? No. He does Oh my god, he does a rant a rant about bangs. And he does it like in this old baseball, you know, old-timey baseball voice cuz he's like a baseball announcer. And he <laughs> 
calls he's like he calls them the devil's curtains like it's just he's got this, um, an epic rant of bangs we, we can't put it in the show because we'll get copyright but i'll link to it because if you go to the site it is just the greatest bangs rant ever bangs yeah. really bangs I, I couldn't even do it justice um yeah. can i show you one thing we're all over the place right now but i'm gonna show it to you anyway can i show you um this is someone, I'm not going to put the, the first picture. There's a photo and then some text. I'm just going to hold it up to the screen for you, Scott. This is uh, someone who I met or who tried to match with me today. And I told you, I get people, especially on Bumble, I get people all over. I get people in South Carolina. I had someone today from Indiana. Like, I don't know what they're thinking. Maybe they're just not looking at where I am. But this one in particular, Scott. They're traveling probably. No, they're in these locations. Sometimes I've matched with people and they're just like, oh, I didn't see where I, you were. I don't get it. Bumble, you should reach out to us. We should fix that. I know, and I'm going to talk to them about that. I was almost a side piece for a lady who's married in South Carolina. She said she knows people in Philly when she comes up. She's like, I was like, I'll take you out. She goes, I'm more worried about somebody who can take me home. I was like, <laughs> okay. And that's what happened. Yeah, I would have been. But here, here, this one's, this one is awesome. You ready for this? Are you looking at the screen? People on, on YouTube? Yeah, it's in Chinese. Yeah. No, Scott, that's Japanese. Oh, that sorry. Is, My apologies. That is Japanese. Yeah. I don't know either. Yokodeki Mashita is what you should say there. Um, for, for those you who took, don't know. You took Japanese in... in fun in, fact! Fun fact, you took Japanese two years? Three years? Two years of Japanese. The only yeah. things I can remember in uh, Japanese uh, basically are... Kanishiwa. Uh, jaketowa. Well, yeah, that too. Everybody knows that. And like Moshi Moshi is how you answer the phone. But what I know is uh, Jaketowa doko desu ka? Which is, where's my jacket? And... Um, I actually thought it would be hilarious to remember the word wakaranai, which means I don't know. I just thought it would be amazing to, the only word I know is I don't know. So were there any pictures associated with the Japanese text? Yeah, there was. I'm not going to put that because that's inappropriate for me to like put this woman's photograph. No, I was um, just wondering. But yeah, yeah, yeah there's a photo. I, I was thinking about Google translating it and seeing like what, what she actually says. Um, but I thought it was really interesting. And like of all people, like I don't, I can't read this right now. I mean, I was 20 well, years ago. Maybe Japanese, that. But. That's a miss in the algorithm, obviously, that she's looking for right. a Japanese-speaking partner. Perhaps. I get people who speak Spanish all the time who match with me. Actually, let's, let's, let's put a pin on what we were talking about before, about how people who, who you talked to over the weekend who feel trapped and, and things like that. A, a woman who I actually matched with, but she was more just sort of looking for friends, and, and, and she's amazing, and she's, I'm not going to give too much information out, but she's not from this country. She met her husband in her native country, and they uh, moved back here together. They have, I believe, two children, one child. They have kids together. And he essentially funds her life. They are divorced, uh, but really no one apparently in their life knows that they are divorced because he controls everything. He essentially funds her existence in this country. And she's terrified. I was like, let's just go get coffee and we'll BS and we'll talk. Maybe you can do some stuff for the site. And she's like, if he finds out, he might cut me off. And I'm like, we're going for coffee. And she's like, oh, it's not worth it. I can't do it. And I, I felt like awful because like she's such a nice person and yeah. yet is put in that situation. And like you said, like it doesn't matter how much money you have, you can be trapped. And, and that's, it's terrible. I, felt, I feel really bad and I wish I could do something. But I think by me continuing to try to do something, I'm actually making it worse for her. Yeah, I think that that's unfortunately more common than we know and like we said that's we're, we're, we're here to help i don't think you need to help everyone individually that's why we've done a podcast and a site and social and everything else so you know for for women and men no matter what the site is a great resource for you to find like-minded people all right can we do a live programming thing i used to do this on my radio show all the time when i couldn't decide what i wanted to talk about i would just say it out loud and we would talk about it i have four things before we get to the interview uh with nicole gray who is coming up in a minute four things you get to pick all none please at least pick one of these four this is everything is set up <laughs> now we're good uh, one, I could I could pay off um, the horrible date that Cammie sent in to us, and I could read her horrible date that I teased last episode. Two, I could either pay off the Beastie Boys now, or I could pay it off on the back end of the interview with Nicole, which would be really dastardly to our, our listeners if they if they care about that Beastie Boys story. Uh, so I think I just programmed that one out loud. We're going to do that later. Um, 
I had uh, an interesting weekend. You said you were up all night. I was up all night because I decided to go out last night at 10 o'clock and ended up spending four hours with someone, um, three of which were very good, one of which was sort of not an argument because I think she was trying to help me, but it was a very sort of tense conversation, which pertains to point four, which is I feel, uh, and this is part of my mental health issues, Scott, but I feel, I feel I got betrayed maybe the, the worst I ever have in my entire life. And I can't get into too much detail about it, uh, but I was really down. And for people who follow me on Instagram, you saw uh, what I wrote yesterday, Scott, when I did that reels where I just started kicking balls as hard as I could. I said something like when, when the day doesn't go your way, kick balls or kick something as hard as you effing can. Um, yeah. Yesterday sucked. It sucked. And the reason I was up all night, Scott, was because I was trying to do this show, but I got so disenfranchised to do the show because of feedback I got regarding the show and people close to me in, 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 uh, in my very, very near circle um, that I just didn't have the energy to do it. And I felt super depressed. And then I realized um, I, I'm off one of my meds. I, I like, because it, like, it was prescribed to be off of my meds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we cut back okay. last week and now I'm off. And, I, and so I'm not 100% sure if I took it that hard because I'm off one of my antidepressants. And so it hit me harder than I realized. Um, it was just bad timing. But anyway, so I can get into a little specifics on that. We can have some fun with the with, with Cami, or or I can talk to you about what happened over the weekend for me. Uh, what do you want to do? I think I already did. Well, I think you've already kind of gone down this this theme. So you've already said you're going to save Beastie Boys for later. I think we hold on yeah. Cami's thing. And I think you've already started to talk about this. So uh, I think we need to stick in our lane. Okay, so so let's do this as quickly as possible. Um, oh, I will say I forgot to mention this before. Um, I I did have uh, I did go out on Friday, whatever. One of the nights this weekend, I did go out uh, with someone, and um, we ended up here. And the first thing that was said, which you are going to love, sir, the first thing that was said when we walked in here is, "Oh my God, it smells so nice in here." Mm-hmm. I do love that. Yeah, That's a big deal. I'm a yeah. smell good guy. Vanilla spice over there. It, it wafts as soon as you walk in the door. And it yeah. worked. I was like, yep, yeah, my brother is going to be very happy you said that. Yeah, I, it, it's something that, that, again, we'll go into much more detail about things like this on the site. But smells matter. It smells matter in your house. It smells matter on your person. Uh, you know, there's lots of people who wear a lot of perfume or cologne. If that's what you're into, that's cool. That's not me. Uh, no, me in, 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 the, in the house, I think that um, I have different smells in different rooms. So you get a different scent, whether you're in the kitchen or the bathroom or the bedroom, <laughs> which is great. <laughs> you do. You do. I mean... In most houses, you get a different smell in the kitchen than in the in, in the bed in the bathroom. I, I, mean, I, would, I would hope. I, you know what I mean. <laughs> when 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 we're not using them, when you're just walking around. Uh, and and Scott, so why I'm does very, your I'm, bathroom I'm very... smell like sugar cookies and your kitchen smell like crap? <laughs> I don't have a crap scent, but but I do have clean linen. <laughs> like that, but... oh, fresh meadows. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> Um, oh, so, so morning dew. Back, back, oh, so, so, morning dew. Right. Morning nice. Dew. So, so back on track. I am back very to my happy yeah. That that she noticed the sense because I am serious. Yes. That that yes. that it's a it's an inexpensive way to make a big difference in your place, and I think yeah. it's important. Yeah, classed up the joint. I mean, all of a sudden, people people smell something nice, and they see it's like you know clean in here, and then they see Baby Yoda up there uh, in a in a frame, and they're like, you know what? I can dig it. It's amazing how many people love that little guy. Mm. Oh, amazing. No, mm. so, do, do you, I mean, do you need do 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 I do we have time? No, nope. nope. no, we don't. No, no. Just finish, finish um, I, thought. So 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 you had. This woman come over, she liked yeah. the scent. This is not the woman from last night that you spent three good hours and one bad. It wasn't one bad, but yeah. So that so anyway, that was great on Friday. I will say, um, 
And you know, uh, this has gotten me in trouble, so fuck it, I'm gonna say it anyway. Um, you know, I have impulse control issues and you also know that I like sending shit to people because who the hell cares? Why not have fun with your life and why have shame at all? I spent too many years with shame. And so now I'll send anything to anyone, right? You want a picture? I'll send it to you right now. You want me to text you? I mean, it'd be totally please, weird. Please don't. I'm not gonna send it to you. The best response I have ever gotten this person's a writer, the best response I've ever gotten. So I will, this is a little pro tip, no pun. If you are one of those people out there who enjoys, you know, sharing untoward photo photographs and other things, really, really take some time to, to give the other person a good response. Not just like, oh my God, you know, like, like you get the, you get the occasional like, oh fuck. And you're like, cool. That, that's going to be fun. But like, this was like, I don't even know. Can I, I, I mean, I kind of want to say, I kind of want to say it, but I don't know. What, what the hell is wrong with you? <laughs> I'm really, really sleep deprived. No, dude, we can't. No, no, you, you have to, you need to stop. Just, it was awesome. I think everyone who's listening understands what it is that you are doing. I don't, I don't think we need any more detail. We're all. But this was an oculus. So that's why it was such a good response. Anyway. Okay, so we all know what you clearly sent a picture of. What was the response? Right, but it's the response. Was, is that, is the, the response was, um, gosh, I just got to read it. Hold on. Hold on. Let me call this up because I can't, I, can't, I can't mess it up. Um, while me. I'm looking that up, the next day, um, yeah, it was just a weird situation uh, yesterday because it's somebody who I really like and I really think um, could be something, and, it, and, I, and I think it still could. But it felt very, um, we've been together six years, like, like very just like, let's lay on the couch and hang out. I'm like, this is the third time we hung out. Like, there's got to be, for me at least, like, because I'm, you can hear my brain sizzle right now. Like, th there's got to be fire. Like, if there's not fire, then what are we doing? We're just watching a movie. And like, I could do that here. And so like, for me, that was very confusing because I think that is something that maybe I'm not as ready for as I thought, Scott. And, and you can speak well. to that, right? Like like it's rubbing also, someone's it, back for two three hours is amazing and i loved it and it was great but i'm like that's what we're doing tonight and now i'm going home oh okay it's it, it's it's a weird time to be dating period just in the era of covid so i think a lot of people don't know what to do and i think i think on the positive side you you do get to know somebody if that's what you're looking to do you get to know somebody a lot better a lot more quickly and intimately than you would ordinarily do so because most people just go out on dates and get drunk go out and it's pretty easy to have a good time when you go out and get drunk but I if you're sober okay, yeah. and you're sitting around with somebody you need to you need to be engaging you need to have you need to know how to talk you need to you know find a show to watch together and laugh and you know do different things like there's not as the weather turns in the north too in the northern united states it's harder to find places to go to. So I think that it's a weird time. That's it. I agree with that, Scott. I do. I hundred, this is why, this is what my issue is. I agree with that. But third date, like you're already I mean, like, I, let's sit and watch a movie and rub each other's feet well, on I third date. All, like, I think it's all circumstantial. Like that's what I would imagine. That's what she wanted. I obviously, and, so and that's, that's fine. Not for and you, like, if that's not for you. Well, then, then maybe it's yeah, not I the need right to figure time that for out. this woman. Yeah. I know it doesn't make well, her I need to figure it out. She and I, no, she's awesome. She's awesome. And I think she's great. And I think that I maybe need to do a little bit more growing up than I, than I thought right now, if that's something that I want to pursue, it's more of a conversation than I thought. My, my thought was like, yeah, we can do all that, but first let's, you know, fall into the wall and put a hole in it or something like that. If, and, and so like that to me is like, you can do both, it, you know, anyway. Um, looks like a ride at Disney that I would get right back in line for after I got off. Come on. So that was my weekend. That was my weekend. What one, the, the juxtaposition of that, that was one day. And then the next day was like, isn't it great that we can not have to have that? And I was like, I, I was honest. I was like, actually, this is new to me. I was I'm like, I'm not going to say yes. I was like, I understand why that would feel that way to you. And I, like, I appreciate that. That is, that is not how I feel. So I, I'm not going to lie and be like, yeah, this is amazing. No, it was very awkward. And I, could, I was very confused. And I said, I have to leave because I'm either going to fuck this up and do something really stupid, or I'm going to continue to try to have sex with you. And then it's going to be either way. It's going to be awkward. and I'm going to ruin this. 
And um, it was like, can you just stay and hang out? And I was like, no, I have to go back and do work. So I came back here at two in the morning and I did work until uh, seven o'clock tonight, which is where we are right now. Yeah. I, I don't know how the Disney <laughs> ride got thrown into your That's amazing. Your nice, your nice chill evening with the woman who the, the way, how, how how I understand. How how long has she been divorced? The one who went into chill? A bit. And she was and she's was in a relationship since then. So to your point, yes, yeah. a while. I get yeah. that. Fine. So Whatever. Different strokes for different folks. Yeah, but Scott, that, that's, that's the thing. Like, and, and, and without getting into too much detail about all that, the first time that we hung out was fire. You know who this person is. Because I was texting you the entire time waiting. Oh. Oh. And so it's weird that now two consecutive times after that first time, it's very mild and very like, let's just get to know each other. I'm like, I, I love getting to know people, but I also like doing other things and that's yeah I'm yeah uh that's interesting um no, look i can't make you do what you what you aren't ready to do but if you were ready to chill with somebody i think she would be somebody nice to chill with yeah and she's great and i know this is all about me and if she's listening to this like i'm this is all on me i need to grow up and i just it's i'm trying to do well, it I, on the it, show. if she's listening to this too i agree with her you do need to grow up well, she didn't say that. I just said it. In, in a way, oh. you agree with me. Mm. All right. We're going to get to uh, the interview with Nicole now. Is that what we're going to do? Fine. Yes. I would love to share Nicole with the world. I'm going to go ride the Matterhorn. Wait, no, that would be weird. That's gross. <laughs> I can't ride it. It's <laughs> You're an idiot. been a very long time. All right. Let's get to the interview, and we'll talk Beastie Boys on the other side and other things. Great. Great. As you can see, it's the festive time of year. And so I am very happy in a festive mood today to talk to Nicole Gray from Gray and Company. You are decorating my house for me, right? Is that, is that why you're, you're just here to do my... I'll be right over. <laughs> we live a little far away for you to do that. But I do have a lot of questions for you because obviously as a single guy uh, and a lot of our audience are single parents, many of them divorced dads, as you know. Um, we don't know how to decorate. You can see behind me. I mean, like, you know, it doesn't look too bad. I'm loving the baby Yoda. Okay. All right. Well, that's cool then. I have street cred for that, but <laughs> it looks a little bit like a kid's room or a frat house or whatever. And, and right. so when we first talked about it, I was sort of like, give me help. But, but really just for, for the general audience, um, first, if you can sort of explain what your expertise is, so people get a little bit of background on you and then we'll get into sort of how you can help us not look like little kids. Absolutely. So my background is uh, pretty diverse. I was a realtor for a really long time. Um, then I started a residential cleaning company that I ran for six years. And that sort of got me into interior design, uh, also home organization. Um, so being, yeah, I mean, cleaning for all those years with my staff, you, we were in a lot of people's homes and we would see the do's and don'ts and the disorganization. And that's how I sort of got into enjoying and working with folks, helping them to decorate their home and make it feel more cozy and inviting. So that's, that's my background. So I started Gray and Company um, at the beginning of the year and it's been wonderful. It's been a lot of fun. You have a, a tree for people who are watching. You can see that for those who aren't. Tree is right next to you. By the way, perfect. Like, I mean, if you're ever going to do an interview with someone else, I mean, for me, this is great. But it's like, <laughs> honestly, it's like the perfect setting. Like, it's a tree next to you, clock, and all the decorations behind you. It's amazing. But so I've been staring at that the whole time because I want to ask this. Now, for me, it's a little different. And for a lot of people who I know who are mixed religion marriages that then dissolve, we have written into our agreement, my ex and I, that she will get Christmas and I will get Hanukkah. Um, and that's the way it goes. Not a lot of people have that luxury. And yeah. you go by either what you agree or the courts and this, that, and the other. Point being, if both families celebrate the same holiday, whether it be Christmas or Hanukkah or Diwali, which just happened, or Kwanzaa, well, I don't know if they give gifts or not, but in terms of the decorating part of it, who gets the stuff? 
who gets the ornaments? Is that something that you've had the experience that that is something people fight over? Do you just split it up? I, 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 I get anxiety even thinking about it and I, it's not even my holiday. Yeah. Yeah. So, and I can, again, speak from personal experience with this, again, being divorced. So, you know, it's, it's certainly going to depend on the situation and the relationship between the parents. Um, you know, I had a pretty cordial separation. So we were able to sit down and, and go through the house and decide who was keeping what. And when it came to the decorations for the holidays, um, I actually let him keep all of those things. Now, that's not always going to work that way, no. but I let him keep those things. And then what I did to make it special for my kids is I took them out and, you know, we went to Home Goods, we went to Target, we went to Walmart and we bought decorations together. I let them pick out, you know, some, I picked out some. This year, we're actually starting something new where I've got this beautiful tree here and now I'm going to put a little small tree in their room. My kids also share a room and they're going to decorate that tree with their ornaments. And, and so it, it worked out well for me. I know it's not always that easy, but it starts with the, the ex talking, talking to them and seeing if they're willing to, to share the items. Because guess what? The kids want, they want everybody to be happy. They want normalcy, right? So yeah. having a little bit of those decorations in each home is, is the way to go. I think it makes it the easiest. I, I, I'm, and again, I'm thankful for the one thing that this doesn't necessarily happen to us, but you know, for the kids who have been in the same house, walked down the same steps every Christmas morning, gone to the same spot in the family run, I'm, I'm, I'm getting upset about this now, just thinking about it. Like you're running to the tree and looking at what presents Santa got them and this, that, and the other. And then all of a sudden they're like, well, you're with dad this year. They yeah. lose out on that. And so that's yeah. where I feel you know, is there, is there some sort of trick? And I mean, obviously going out and getting the kids involved, how do you make your new space feel like it's that same nostalgic feeling of running down the steps and being, especially with younger kids? Yeah. You, you always want to protect your kids, but at the same time, like it's your year with them. You have to sure. develop your own, um, you know, what, what I'm forget the word, like traditions. traditions. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. And that's, and I think that's actually something that can be exciting, you know, and you've got to play it up that way that, Hey, now we, you know, we're in a new home this year, but why don't we sit down and talk about some things that you would like to do every Christmas, you know, whether that's, you know, having a great Christmas breakfast together or, you know, opening one Christmas present on Christmas Eve and the rest on Christmas. But you know, in my home, um, we try, most years we try to split the holiday because my ex is close, but there have been a couple of years where he's taken the kids away and I missed out on seeing them for Christmas. Um, so we just do Christmas another day. Yeah, it's not exactly the same thing, but they'll come to me a couple of days later and we will reenact the whole thing as if it's Christmas again and they love it. And, you know, I, I be sh I'm sure that some of the traditions that we had when we were a family still carry over, especially the ones that they really enjoyed. Um, you know, maybe going to grandma's, not so much fun, <laughs> but, yeah. but you've got to really talk to the kids and get them involved and see what's important to them. And, uh, you know, you can make it work. Grandma's got over by a pandemic this year. <laughs> oh, sorry. That was very dark. I don't know why I said that. <laughs> Grandma did not get run over by a, a pandemic, kids. <laughs> what would you suggest and this is, has nothing to do with decorating but i, tr I trust your opinion on this okay. uh, what would you suggest parents say to their kids when their younger kids ask which house is santa going to come to Ooh. well santa's going to come to both houses he's going to come to both houses you know i mean i um but I mean, santa my... needs to coordinate with the parents so the parents know who's which, which gifts are going to which house, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I, listen, you can just say, I mean, I've said to my kids before, well, you know, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll send, an, well, there's, there are these things where you can like email Santa. There are these apps where you can, you know, you can get right. Santa to like say stuff. Have you ever seen these things? Yeah, it's bizarre. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> right. There's ways around it though. But no, you just tell the kids if they still believe that that Santa, you'll let them know, you'll send them an email, you'll send them a note that the kid, you know, their kids are going to be with you this year or they're going to be with mom that year. And and it all works out. They just want to. By the way, 
another total sidebar. I was in the mall the other day and that's a weird place to be at this time of year because you're fully enclosed and there's people around, but you try and keep your distance. Well, there's Santa's in the mall, at least in New Jersey. And oh my gosh, it is. So Santa sits in his chair and there's a giant plexiglass. I knew you were going to say that. In front of Santa. Oh God. Yeah. And it's like, you certainly can't sit on his lap, although I think that maybe in this day and age has probably gone by the wayside. You touch anyway. hands, you put your hands together. Yeah. It's like you're miming with Santa. <laughs> Hello, Santa. I would like. I was Boy, wondering, I, was... I have not been to the mall in a while. I was wondering if Santa was going to be in the mall. That is crazy. Very odd. Like, and I get it. You still want to keep those traditions alive. And this goes back to the you know, whole thing. This is a weird year for people. Um, yeah. For me, this will be the first year that we're in different homes. So it's tough for our kids. And then on top of that, you can't get your family together. I mean, yeah. I think people have, this, this is the really difficult thing is that for months now, people have been resigned to the fact that like Thanksgiving's different. Halloween was different. Christmas is different. New Year's Eve. Are there even going to be New Year's Eve parties? Bars aren't even allowed to be open past nine o'clock or 10 o'clock. It's just such a weird thing that yeah. you try to make the best of it. But when it comes to your kids, they don't, it's not fair to them. They don't understand this. It's not, we, you know, they understand the masks, but like, why is Chris, why isn't grandma going to be here for Christmas? Yeah. It's so tough. I know. Hand. I know. Yeah. I, I, oh, yeah, I get it. I get it. I mean, we're going to be doing some zoom calls and some WhatsApp, you know, chats and stuff like that, but you got to make the best of it. Right. And, uh, you know, hopefully you can have, you know, whoever your kids are used to seeing all the time, you know, who they're around and maybe it's just mom and dad and siblings, but you know, that's who you have to spend time with this year. And then, like I said, still keep some traditions going, whether that's watching a Christmas show together or having a favorite meal, but just, you know, it's a great, if you have little kids, it's a great time to, you know, make handmade cards for your family members and get those off in the mail and do things like that if you can't be with those folks this year. Bake cookies together, send them to your family, that kind of stuff. That's a great idea. The card is, is, is something that, you know, everybody prints the photo cards and stuff. But to your point, um, we have a cricket machine behind us and it's a godsend. We've made so many stickers and shirts and everything nice. and just to do like a little three dimensional card. Actually, you know what? I have one right here. Excuse me for a second. This is back from Father's Day that the Very kids made cool. and it's, you know and just like the whole thing gets cut on the, so i love that yeah these are little things that you know what i still have that how many father's day cards or mother's day cards do you leave out all year well it's just so neat how they did it yeah very so cool. i i appreciate that um I, so here, my, my last question for you um is i don't want the answer to this so <laughs> Okay. I mean, I want your answer to it, but I don't, I don't want to know the answer to it. So every year I used to decorate the house outside um, and, and a lot inside as well. I'm tall. My ex wasn't, it just sort of became logistics. And I, I said to her the other day, like, if you need help getting the tree out of the basement, because it's very difficult to get up the stairs, let me know and whatever, they'll figure it out. Um, but then I started to think, and again, not my holiday, I started to think of all the ornaments that have the two of us on there or that have one of us and the kids or all four of us on there and they have the year on it. And so yeah. from a historical sense, like that happened, that, that time in our lives happened. And nice. yet I understand that she's moved on. I've moved on. We're not together anymore and we're still a family, but it's, it's different. Does that stuff get, like a special place on the back of the tree for a couple of years until the kids get over it? Or do you, do you just like put it somewhere else on like a little, like maybe that's the tree that they put in their room where like those are the ornaments with dad. I just feel yeah. like there's so much of our history on that tree every year. And, and, yeah. and a tradition that I've adopted and it means a lot to me now because you could see the years and years. We had that tree since we were engaged. That's tw- almost 20 years ago. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so there's a couple different options. And, and again, I think doing the, um, the kid tree is a cool thing to do. I mean, I told my kids that I was going to let, if they wanted to, I would get them a small tree for their room and let them put on all the kid ornaments and pick out some new ones. They were so excited to do that. Um, but it's, if you're okay with putting up picture, you know, the ornaments with pictures of your ex, 
Yeah. Then you should do it. If, if your kids want to, I mean, guess what? Some divorces aren't, don't end well. And some kids, I hate to say it. Some, I mean, if they're older, I know when my parents got divorced, I was relieved because they fought so much. I didn't want to see it. So yeah. I would have been the kid that was okay with not seeing those ornaments, but, um, but I was older. I was 17 when my, my parents divorced, sure. but I think that you have to have a conversation with the kids and say, Hey, we've got these ornaments. And you know, this, especially if it's the first Christmas that you're now separated, but ask the kids what their opinion is. And if it's something where they want them up and you're having a tough time with it, then suggest maybe doing a small tree in their, in their room yeah. or just suck it up and do it. You know, you're doing it for them, right? I mean, if you want right. to make this as normal and good feeling as possible for them. So you, you make a sacrifice if you have to. Yeah, we, we are doing something similar in the way that um, the kids can put whatever Christmas stuff they want here. And I said, just put it in your room. Like, I mean, I don't, I don't dislike Christmas all of a sudden. I just, it's not my holiday. I'm not going to put a tree up because it's not me. But if they want to put one up, we'll put it in their room and they yeah. can have everything they want. And the same thing, like there are placemats and they eat breakfast over at the house. Um, not, we call it the house in the apartment, whatever. Um, and the placemats are Hanukkah placemats and they have their mm -hmm. names on them. They use them every, all winter every year. And so they brought them back. So there's a little bit of Hanukkah there uh, and then a little bit of Christmas here. And, and we try to keep it in their own personal spaces, which I guess is, is probably the, the safest way to go, certainly. Yeah, for sure. Definitely. Thank you so much for doing this. I mean, awesome. this is a, a, it's an important time of year for people um, in terms of decorating. So I'm sure you're extremely busy. So I appreciate you taking the time to talk to me, but also in terms of like this family bonding and how putting stuff around you where it's, it's so important to keeping those traditions alive. So I really appreciate your, your help and advice. And then in the new year, we'll, I don't know, what are we going to do? Like how to, how to make your Valentine's Day house not look like a sex den. I mean, that's usually what we talk you know, about we here. Should, so. You know what? We should definitely focus on having your home, uh, having the guy's home feel like an adult home and having, when you're having a date over, because, you know, we've been on dates before. Well, I've been on dates before where I've walked into a total bachelor pad. No, you've been on dates too, but oh, no, I thought <laughs> a total it was like bachelor pad. And there's some things that I've definitely seen that shouldn't be showing and things that yes. could be out to impress a girl. So we should definitely talk about that. Absolutely. So that's what we'll do next. But for now, as, as we're putting this up, you know, as the, we get closer and closer to the holidays, um, this is awesome. We're going to obviously have people knocking on your door figuratively. I don't want anybody showing up at your house, but knock, <laughs> knocking on your door for advice on how to finish those dressers and when they get frustrated, how they can drive them to you so you can do it for them and make money. So, Why not? I'll help out. <laughs> thank you so much. All right, sweetheart. We have great guests, like really smart women yeah. who a lot of are divorced parents uh, and are going through a lot of the same things as us. And so this, when we talked about getting these, uh, these experts, I don't think we really knew how, how awesome they were going to be right off the bat. Oh, I agree. And, and Nicole, uh, which what you guys just heard, as you mentioned earlier, there's more to it. And I think what I, what I like the most, and you'll see this on the site, you'll hear it on the site is the tips that she has to really make things a little more palatable as you go through great change. It's awesome to talk about what you do during the holidays and, and everything she's saying right. about ornaments and you know whether you have a good relationship with your ex or not. But I actually think the stuff she talks about when you move from a bigger place to a smaller place and, and all that is really, really valuable because I've been there. I know that. I went from a big place to a, to a similar size place to a smaller place and just kind of all around. And I wish I would have put some stuff in storage because you know, who knows, maybe I'll end up with a bigger place eventually. And, and, um, I would like some of my stuff back, but too late. I've been thinking, I've been thinking about that right now, uh, myself, because, um, I got my renewal for my lease that I have to sign by the beginning of February. And I'm thinking to myself, like, I've, I, I've gotten the itch of like looking at houses in, in the town. Like at some point I'm going to not want to live in a two bedroom apartment. At least I'm going to get a bigger apartment or a townhouse or a house or whatever. And so like, it's good. I feel, I feel like a, in a weird way, we talked about this earlier, like I need to grow up, but I feel adult. Like, I feel like I'm, I'm like, I never thought I would feel this way. And so that's definitely a lot of growth on my part. Um, and by the way, can I just say one thing about what we talked about before? Like, I'm just fucking, I'm just having fun. Like don't call my mom and tell her that, um, you know, 
licking telephone poles or whatever. Like people out there, like it's, I'm having fun. And, and sometimes you have to make- How many, how many people are calling mom? <laughs> Just a couple. I hope so. Well, well, well if, if you don't know her mom, please don't call her. <laughs> <laughs> right, fine. Klondike 54226. That's her number. Gotcha. Do you know whose number that is? Let's see if you get that pop culture reference. You got the Art one earlier. Simpson. Oh, it was the Simpsons. It was the Simpsons, right? Yeah. Well, John Q. Wow. Public has our phone number now. And now we play the waiting game. Ah, the two waiting game two. sucks. Let's play Hungry Hungry Hippos. <laughs> two for two speaking for two of playing the games. pop culture references. Speaking of playing games, let's pay off the Beastie Boys. Can I do the... No, um, sleep till Brooklyn. Is that the one you want under it? That's, that's the one we're going to do? I was going to do the acapella of the, uh, of the sabotage again. Oh, but we'll go classy. We'll class it up a little bit. Okay, so this was years ago. Uh, I was an unpaid intern at the what was then in Philadelphia, the first union center, uh, which everyone in Philly obviously called the FU center because it's Philly. And I worked for the building PR. And so I, I did all the concerts, right? Like I hung out in the front row when the Spice Girls were there, Shania Twain. When, 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 when Jimmy Page and Robert Plant did that like reunion tour, it was like the two of them high-fived and then went out like respective sides so they would all end up on stage at the same time and it was like the two of them me and one camera guy it was like the coolest moment in like my rock history world I'm like like i wanted to take a picture of it but like you can't because you're working and stuff you know i'm gonna turn that down because now i'm very distracted but the most embarrassing thing that i have ever done yeah the most embarrassing thing that i have ever done the beastie boys were playing and they had a thing in their contract where they in order to get amped up they played basketball before they went on stage and this was in Philly. And so um, they actually went over to the old Spectrum and they set up like a makeshift basketball court at the Spectrum because the concert was over at the center, uh, which for people who know Philly is like, you know, short parking lot, walk away. So they're playing basketball. It's like the three Beastie Boys, their DJ, and like their, their A&R guy, or one other guy who works. So it's three on three. And maybe I forgot somebody. I thought they were going to need a guy to play. So I'm like, you know, I'm like in my twenties. I'm like, Oh my God, I'm going to, I'm going to get to play with the Beastie Boys. No, my boss says, Hey, can you go get these guys some water? Well, I didn't work in that building. I had no idea where the water was. I go around and I'm like, all right, let's get a water. You know, nothing is open because it's, you know, there's a concert. It's at night. Everybody locks their offices, right? You have an office, you lock it. You don't just leave it open so people can steal all your crap. Do you? No, no. So we, me and two other interns walked panickingly through the spectrum trying to find water for the beastie boys and we can't find it anywhere and so all we were able to do we were able to go into the philadelphia kicks which was the indoor soccer team at the time and they had a kitchen or kitchenette and, and, and we took the pots of coffee like the orange top for the decaf and the brown top for the calf and some styrofoam cups that were with the coffee and we filled it with tap water and we walked back to the arena floor and it was like, you know, you know, when like you're listening to a show or something and it's like that screech sound, like, like the record stops and it'd be like perfect for the beastie boys. Um, that's what happened. You hear like the ball go doof, 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 doof. And they all just look at us and we're holding these pots of coffee. We're like we have water. And they're like, where were you guys? Right. Like, we couldn't find water. Meanwhile, our boss, went broke into the ceo of the wings office and came back with like a 12 pack of bottled water like a hero and we're like dude what he's like why couldn't you get this i'm like you wanted us to literally break into like the boss's office this is all we could find we were set up for failure that was the most embarrassing thing that's ever happened and it was in front of the beastie boys so the moral of the story is you need to be more resourceful the moral of the story is if you need to get the Beastie Boys water, break some windows or something. I don't know. I don't think anyone, I don't think anyone who's listening is getting the Beastie Boys any water, but yes. Well, not anymore. Because, I mean. Correct. Yeah. I mean. I think they get their own water. Well, I mean, well, there's only two of them left. I know. It's sad. I'm sure they have people who get them their own water, which was, which was weird because I was like, they do this all the time. 
like they play basketball before every concert w- wouldn't they have someone who would like provide water for them like is this did they not think of this where's the water for the beastie boys so similar to what the beastie boys do before a concert you decide to stay up all night before you tape a show which is your way of getting fired up no sleep till podcast <laughs> I didn't do it on purpose, man. Uh, there's a lot of work to be done. It was that it was not my fault, but yes. I didn't fine. play. I, I didn't blame you in any in any way. I didn't blame you. If anything, it's my own. It's loud. Whoa. Turn that down. Yeah, it is. I need some sleep. Yes, or more do. coffee. Yes, sleep is way better. Oh, mania. Yes. How do you want to sleep to Brooklyn? Uh, again, thanks for everyone's support. Over the holiday, more to come. There's more holidays to come. And we want to continue to grow this wonderful family we've got together. So keep the questions coming. Kids first. <laughs>